Hola y bienvenidos otra vez a Desayuno por Todo el Día. Soy Christy, es mi amigo Alonso. Hola. Ahora, ahora vamos a hablar de la nueva película de Pedro Amodóvar. Se llama Madres Paralelas. 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 Muchas gracias. Mi amigo Alonso va a descri describirla. Alonso, uh, take it it's, away. It's Alonso in Spanish. Thank Alonso, you lo siento mucho. <laughs> uh, Parallel Mothers, opening on Christmas Eve. This is uh, one of my very favorite films of the year. It's the latest from Pedro Almodovar, and it stars Penelope Cruz as a fashion photographer. She uh, gets pregnant and winds up giving uh, birth in a hospital in Madrid on the same day as a young woman played by uh, Melina Smith, who is a relative newcomer, but she's amazing in this movie. And uh, these two women who would otherwise probably have never met uh, become friends and their lives become intertwined um, as they both embark into becoming mothers and dealing with their own separate issues. Uh, Melena Smith's mother, played by the uh, legendary Spanish actress Aitana Sanchez Gijón, is uh, an actress herself whose career is just beginning to take off. And so she is off touring the provinces instead of uh, staying home and helping her daughter, uh, her teenage daughter, uh, raise a newborn. Uh, Cruz's character has uh, working with the, the the man who got her pregnant um, mm -hmm. because he is an archaeologist who has been uh, working on finding the unmarked graves from the Spanish Civil War um, when uh, the fascists would uh, uh, murder uh, local um, you know political enemies, take them out to the edge of town, uh, bury them in an unmarked grave. And this was some you know 80 years ago in Spain, and it's still a very touchy subject. There are people who want Want to uh, find and uncover those graves and give the people inside uh, a decent burial. There are other people who feel like to literally unearth the past um, is just going to open old wounds. And so it's much like the conversation that's happening in the United States about critical race theory, about dealing with the past and dealing with history. But in Spain, it's about uh, these, these unmarked graves from the Civil War. And so what Almodovar does is, you know, kind of sets you up for what you would expect is, oh, it's a melodrama about two women who are new mothers and their relationship to each other. And it is that, and it's that brilliantly in the way that Almodovar does. But it really also takes on the larger topic of the fact that every birth and every death and every life becomes part of history itself and that we are part of a history and that uh, everything that comes before us, everything that comes after us is part of that history as well. And that to ignore it does not mean that it's going to go away. Uh, this is a beautiful film. It's a powerful film. It takes on big issues, but it never stops being about the characters. Yeah, you described that very beautifully. I almost don't Thank want you. to add anything. Um, but <laughs> but this is the eighth film that Pedro Almodovar and Penelope Cruz have made together. And they have just this fantastic magical connection with each other, right? Like Absolutely. he gets the absolute best out of her. She's so, so sexy and so funny and like earthy and warm and grounded. And this is a movie that in its bones is very soapy and very melodramatic. And she keeps every twist and turn, totally grounded. Every high and low, you are along with her and she makes it relatable and accessible and um, brings great humanity and great warmth to it. And her connection with Melena Smith's character um, at first seems like, you know, a couple of new moms and they're there for each other. And, you know, you, you make friends with people that you wouldn't meet ordinarily when you're new moms together and they experience the exhilaration, but also the exhaustion of, of being a new mom. Um, but the way that that relationship evolves is um, alive and surprising. But again, because their chemistry yeah. feels so real, like you're along with them for it. It never becomes unbelievable. And then what the, the ultimate magic trick here is that, you know, the little snippets of conversation throughout the film about Spain's history, which feel like they're just, you know, background stuff. Sure, color. Like, th yeah, they kind of like, they come and they they get interwoven. And at the end, he reveals like, this was a story that he wanted to tell all along through this very intimate and personal prism of these two women who look out for each other. It's yeah. about strong women looking out for each other across decades, across generations, reaching back to, to look, help each other as they try to forge a new and happier future together. And so it's about, you know, as so many Almodovar films are, the strength of women 
Rossi De Palma comes swooping yes. in in a Technicolor <laughs> trench coat. Um, yeah, but as you said, like you think you're in a very familiar kind of Almodovar film because it's like his signature production design. It's, you know, the Alberto Iglesias score yeah. is um, very string heavy and, and propulsive and it almost feels like a horror theme at times. It gets very intense um, and it's his usual cinematographer and production designer. Um, you've got, you know, that that signature color red that is echoed all throughout from from Janice's cardigan to her camera bag to her stroller to her baby Bjorn to the fruit bowl to the picture frames like it should just be a nail polish color it should just be like Almodovar red at this point because it's you know it's so him with like the green subway tile and the in the bathroom as like a, a contrasting color it's, it's, so it's he makes you feel like it's familiar and yet by the end is challenging your assumptions about these characters and about what this story really is. Yeah, totally. Uh, and, you know, I, I think, uh, you know, his, the way that he works with Cruz is so great because this character makes choices that at first you're like, <laughs> oh, okay, but you go with it because you understand that, you know, he, he crafts behavior in a way that it is, always recognizably human even if it isn't sort of dramatically convenient mm -hmm. you know but you know that if, if if he does wade into territories that are complicated or difficult that that the movie is gonna work you work through them and and sort of incorporate them into a complex and complicated but, but very recognizable human being you know and, and that's certainly what he does here so yeah I, this movie i've seen a couple times now and and it is like a magic trick you are mm -hmm. he, he's he, he he's holding up this one thing and then boom, you know out <laughs> comes the other and you're like oh okay <laughs> and even when you see it coming you still don't see it coming and um uh, certainly i think for me you know, my parents were alive for the Spanish Civil War. So like that's been a thing that that is certainly throughout my life has kind of resonated and been this present thing, whether it's a conversation about the the actual mechanics of like, oh, you know, we had to move to the country or, you know, we it was hard to get food at times and blah, blah, blah. But then also these sort of larger repercussions of the country is still dealing with, you know, going on 80 years later, uh, 90 years later, practically, um, you know, that, that were that were devastating. And that, uh, that, that, again, it, it, it's that issue of like, if we even talk about it, if we acknowledge that it happened, or does that make us culpable in the present and who does want to talk about it versus who doesn't want to talk about it is always very enlightening you know mm. so yeah I just I found all of that stuff really moving and fascinating I was going to ask you about that because I know your parents were from Spain and so I was you know wondering like what your own personal connection was to the material and what what memories you have through them of, of all of that yeah again like I said a lot of it's very quotidian my mom was a child but like you know her family had been living in Madrid and they moved out to the this house in the country to sort of like ride out the war years and my father was like a teenager and and was held at gunpoint at various points sort of like asked to identify himself as like you know are you with the republic or are you with you know with franco like they yeah like so it, it their entire generation for in different ways just sort of was steeped in all of that stuff and you know almodovar himself exploded in this period that happened in Spain because Franco finally died and because mm. the fascist era of that country finally ended and you know the, the they 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 switched to elected forms of government and the Catholic Church no longer had the stranglehold on everything that it did while during their period of collaboration with the fascists so everything that happens to all of us is a is a is a is a result of history it's a reflection of history and it's we are where history has gotten us you know and that's what this movie it tries to take on and i think succeeds and it's no coincidence that it takes place in the winter of 2016 a period in europe where like you know right-wing extremism was on the rise true true right so that, that i think that must tie into all of this as well sure so. yeah much much as it does with red rocket <laughs> Yes, 2016, a fertile time for, for storytelling. Um, what is your number, my friend? I give this a 10. This is okay. this and Licorice Pizza were duking it out for my best mm -hmm. film of the year. And I was very tempted to give them a tie. And depending on the day you ask me, I wound up giving making this my number two on my list at the wrap. But it's it is a, 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 an extraordinary movie. People should absolutely see it. If you've never seen an Almodovar movie, this is as good a place as any to start. Sure. It's it's just great.
Sure. I'm saying nine. So our number is a 9.5 and Parallel Mothers is in theaters because it's Sony Pictures Classics, right? Correct. It is in theaters, probably in like New York, LA, and I'm not sure in, in a bunch of other, how many other places, but I think we will be seeing it, you know, obviously uh, platform out. Um, I, I saw some of the coverage of the LA Film Critics Awards where we honored uh, Penelope Cruz as best actress of the year, said that that sort of will help keep her in the conversation. So maybe this movie has some Oscar nominations in the future. I don't know. I only care to the extent that it's going to keep it in theaters and make it accessible to more people. So, you know, we'll see if that happens. But anyway, keep an eye out for Parallel Mothers. It's absolutely one of the best films of 2021. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. Um, like this video, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh, check us out on the social media at BeFast All Day. And of course, visit our Patreon page at patreon.com slash BeFast All Day. Uh, our off the menu selection for this month is Ingmar Bergman's uh, Fanny and Alexander. We're winding up our recaps of Disney Plus's Hawkeye, and you get videos like this with no commercial interruption and lots of other fun stuff exclusively for our subscribers. So check that out at patreon.com slash day. If you are listening to the audio portion of this podcast and you don't want to hear spoilers about Spider-Man No Way Home, stop now. <laughs> Bye. Bye. <laughs>